Hello and welcome to Cafe New Canadians. Today's topic is uh, from mentees to mentors. What's it like? Cafe New Canadians is brought to you by New Canadians, where every week we bring topic uh, that matters to uh, new immigrants, newcomers to Canada, students, and all those who plan to come to Canada. Cafe New Canadians is brought to you by New Canadians, and you can follow us uh, on our website, uh, newcanadians.tv, and also uh, through our uh, YouTube channel, uh, Cafe New Canadians. And also, you can watch us on Omni Television uh, if you are in Canada and uh, from uh, everywhere you can follow us uh, on Omni Television. This uh, session is uh, brought to you by uh, uh, Employment, uh, Destination Employment. Uh, this uh, session is sponsored by Destination Employment. Uh, a program that helps newcomers to Canada gain meaningful employment in Canadian hotels and tourism sector. Uh, participants in this program get free training and mentorship opportunities to know more about the program and to register, uh, visit uh, their website. Uh, that's um, uh, uh, on, on the screen right now. You can follow uh, and you can log on to this website. Uh, today's session is... Uh, as you know, the topic is from mentees to mentors. What's this like? Um, when we call uh, about uh, mentorship, that's then that's an integral part uh, when you are planning to come to Canada or you already here in Canada, uh, because um, people call uh, this uh, mentorship a blessing uh, here in Canada because uh, the guidance uh, you need for your employment for your career. Um, everything uh, starts with this um, uh, mentorship because uh, uh, a person who is already uh, in that specific field and specific sector can guide you a lot better uh, about uh, the job opportunities and how to apply, not exactly uh, about the field, but um, all about uh, how to go around uh, uh, in the in the job market here in Canada uh, to see what are the opportunities and what are the uh, things that you, you can follow. My name is Sher Dal Khan. I'm uh, today's moderator. And uh, we have uh, very um, pertinent guests with us. And uh, let me introduce uh, all of them. First of all, Pradeep Mathur, who is a uh, very important uh, and uh, very senior uh, mentor and uh, uh, other than that, uh, we have Olabisi uh, Desina with us. Uh, also, uh, she was a mentee and now um, mentoring uh, so many people here in Canada. And also with us, uh, uh, Majid Kazmi, uh, who's also a mentor. And once he was also a mentee and now uh, transferring his knowledge to uh, his mentees. So thank you very much uh, for joining us. And um, uh, we'll start the conversation and uh, thank you so much for all uh, who have joined us uh, through Zoom and also who are watching us uh, through YouTube and you can send us uh, your questions and uh, during the conversation we'll uh, bring in your questions and we'll try to uh, put forward them uh, to our uh, guests. So a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, uh, as uh, we all know that uh, the topic is uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, and uh, first of all I'll uh, go to Pradeep and uh, ask uh, the basic question the first question would be like uh, what was your experience Pradeep when you was uh, you were a mentee and now you are uh, a mentor so tell us about your experience as a mentee how was that uh, you are on mute Uh, I came here a few years ago and uh, being a seasoned banker, I did find a lot of difficulties finding a job. Uh, of course, it was at the time of the rece financial recession, 2008-2009, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it took me almost 13 year months to find a job. Uh, I also learned about the mentorship program, which Mentoring Partnership Triac offers very late in the day. So one of the things that happened in my case is I did not know the amount of resources that the government of Canada provides in terms of community partners, in terms of the mentoring program, 
So that delayed my start of getting this kind of a thing. Uh, but having got that mentoring fairly late as a mentee, uh, I had a mentor from Bank of Montreal. Uh, within a month of that, I did get a job. Yeah. So my experience as a mentee was limited, but it was helpful. Uh, it spurred me on to doing or giving back. So that's the gist of the experience that I had. So, uh, Olabesi, what about you uh, as a mentee? What was your experience? Okay, so right from my home country, I attended this um, pre-arrival session. It was a whole day session back then at home and um, was part of that, um, of that whole session that they now gave me what we call them, my action plan. And they linked me to, you know, a career counselor and they linked me to my mentor, which was Rick McCallion back then. That was way back in 2017. Yes. So that's I got to know about the old, about the old programs. And I think I kind of, unlike um, Pradeep, I kind of got to know right on from the start what we had available to us as immigrants. So I took advantage of all those programs, you know, all the way from Nigeria. I had this mentor, this career counselor. And, you know, I, I felt, but I felt like, wow, this is such, you know, I felt really seen and really helped. You know, it helped lessen my anxiety coming down to Canada. So I thought to myself, okay, when I settle down, I'll kind of like to do what these guys are doing. And that was, that, that was what, that, that, that feeling of being, you know, taken care of, being assured, you know, being made not to panic, coming to a new country, taking your whole life off for the, you know, on a, on, a, on, a, on a different path. It helped me. So I was like, okay, I think I'd like to do this when I kind of settle down. And that's what brought me to this point. So, Majid, uh, what about you? Because uh, Pradeep said uh, he was uh, a bit late in getting the uh, mentorship uh, initially. So, what was your experience? Uh, did you, uh, before coming to Canada, did you uh, know about this uh, opportunity or uh, you explored uh, later on? Shridhal, I, I would say perhaps I was one of the most ignorant newcomers uh, eight years back when I came to Toronto from Karachi, Pakistan. I had no idea what mentor, mentorship is really uh, because I just knew uh, that there's a word called you know mentor and mentee and uh, what it entails in terms of a formal relationship is something that I learned um, after quite a few months um, you know being a newcomer I initially took uh, so uh, right out of airport I had no clue sure how to go about applying for jobs in my field so the only thing I could think of was applying online I had an old version of my CV ready, which was a five page document, by the way, uh, that I started posting to, you know, in response to all job uh, advertisements. And probably four to five months later, when I realized that I'm not even getting one interview call, I decided to uh, look up for, you know, uh, other opportunities and other options. And that is when I learned about Toronto Region Immigrant Employment Council's, uh, the mentoring partnership program. Uh, I think by the time, uh, by the time I was formally engaged, in a mentoring relationship, it had already been six to seven months, um, unsuccessful, okay. not being able to get even one interview call. So it was a hard, uh, you know, learning experience for me. And my mentor, even though the relationship itself was short, only a couple of weeks, I uh, learned immensely from that experience. So, uh, Pradeep, uh, how was your experience with your uh, mentor? Because uh, you said that uh, you were quite a bit late in uh, getting that. Uh, uh, so, uh, after uh, when you got your mentor, uh, how was your experience? Uh, how was your relationship, and how you built that relationship with your man with your mentor? So, I think I would have uh, met my mentor maybe just twice or thrice. Uh, wasn't a lot of time, was on a, I think, weekly basis. And uh, there was good, some good guidance provided, but because it was so late, I don't think I really got the benefit of the mentorship. My real learning there was that clearly people who are coming into this country, uh, if they knew ahead of time, or nowadays internet is so powerful, people are smart, they get that information or a pre-packaged deal where people are aware of the opportunities that come. So like Majid or unlike me, where we were, we were missing out that tools that are available in terms of the community partners, 
uh, and Triac does work with 12 community partners. So they are great consultants. They are great help, which then they work with you originally and then help you get a mentor later on. So mentoring is later, but they are community partners. So resources wise, if people who are coming to Canada know ahead of time, that would be a great advantage for them to prepare for this next step. Uh, Olabisi, uh, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, you were quick to uh, get this uh, opportunity. Uh, so how did you build your relationship with your uh, mentor and how was that? Okay, so it was purely on LinkedIn. That was, um, okay, LinkedIn and the Canada Infonet, um, this portal that we use, you know, to communicate. That's on LinkedIn. So it was never physical. It was always virtual. It was by emails, you know, by messages and um, by LinkedIn chats. So that was like, so I don't, I can't say I know him, apart from his picture on LinkedIn, I can't recognize him if I see him face to face. So it was really warm. I was really accommodating, you know, it was prompt to respond to my questions and we built a bond. So even when I came down to Canada, we, we still kept in touch for a few more months until, you know, kind of got, I got settled down and I let him go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Majid, uh, what do you suggest? Like how uh, to communicate with your mentor uh, when you uh, get this opportunity? How, because this also matters a lot, how you communicate with the, uh, your mentor and um, uh, how you can get the full benefit out of it. So what, what do you think about that? Uh, and uh, what do you suggest uh, people who are getting this uh, opportunity to um, get full benefit out of it? Great question, Shridhar. I would suggest a couple of things. I would say right uh, at the point of departure, it is important for both parties to understand the person and the purpose. Uh, you know, you cannot embark on any relationship in life without understand, uh, understanding who the other person is. Uh, so it uh, goes for both the mentor and the mentee. For mentee, it's very essential to uh, understand the resources that the mentor can bring to the table. Uh, knowing who that person is, what their inclination and interests are, of course, what the nuances of their work experience have been, which industry they have been involved in, uh, so that you can uh, plan ahead as to what questions you would be asking. And again, as I said, what, the, what are the resources that they can share with you? So knowing the person is very important. Again, from a mentor's perspective, it is important to understand who the mentee is, what their motivations are, um, what their goals in life are, uh, life are um, in their career, as well as, uh, you know, personally in their life. And knowing the purpose is perhaps more important than that. Uh, I've seen that people embark on mentoring relationship without knowing what the mentee is looking for. You cannot make assumptions. And that is why I say that just like in group dynamics, in, in how teams are form, there's a norming, forming, storming uh, in different stages, just like that. Yeah. The first stage would be trying to understand what the purpose of the mentee is. And without jumping the gun and assuming uh, that all newcomers coming to Canada are the same, looking for the same thing, you have to spend probably your first meeting or a couple of meetings understanding what the goals and motivations are. So if yes, I can just uh, add there, yeah, sure. if I can just add there on the mentoring partnership when I started doing it, there used to be the formal agreement that we would sign where the mentor's goal and, uh, sorry, the mentee's goals and the mentor suggestions sort of were put down on a piece of paper. But yeah, rather than a piece of paper, I think it's reflecting what Majid was saying. What is it that you all, what the mentee is looking for, what you as a mentor can provide, align that so that uh, you can do it. And every time there will not be a perfect match. I may get a mentee who is not exactly in, I may not be able to provide any exact technical uh, competence or details on that. So setting out those purpose and uh, things are, I think are very important. So I agree with Majid. Yeah, yeah. my next question is just like the same, like how um, fortunate uh, a, a mentee can be if uh, he or she can get uh, a mentor from exact from the same uh, feel that uh, he's looking or she's looking for? So at least I can speak to the mentoring partnership process. Uh, there are lots of mentoring and lots of uh, details. Mentoring partnership, the way it works is, these are, there are these 12 uh, community partners that Triac works with. 
people join the community like access employment or skills for change the consultant there after having spent a month or two months will look in the pool of mentors available under the mentoring partnership and try to match the skill of the immigrant with the skill of the mentor who's available at that time and then they will reach out to the mentor to say hey pradeep here is a mentee this is the profile of the mentee do you want to take this men mentee on and there've been a couple of times when i've had to say sorry i am i'm a banker but this person has a banking experience but in the finance and accounting side that's not a perfect match for me i can mentor the person but i think that mentee can find a better match somewhere else there's an option for the mentor to say i don't think and of course similarly the mentee also has an option to accept the mentor that the consultant is suggesting so i think that's important to see that that match is there so that the mentee and mentor can both benefit each other yes so, so if i may if i may yeah. add that just just alluding yeah. to um, to what uh, pradeep already mentioned there's no harm in turning down a request from a potential mentee because if you feel that there's a lack of common ground in terms of the professional background um, that you two have i think it's better to let the mentee connect with somebody who can be a more relevant resource and a mentor uh, down the line uh, because uh, if uh, for me personally i prefer a more organic relationship building rather than banking on structured mentoring program so perhaps over the last 8 years i've had 200 mentors 99% of them have reached out to me through linkedin or or other means in doing that i have more leeway as to uh, picking and choosing which mentees to work with uh, i would uh, just you know second the thoughts that um, that uh, pradeep had it is very important that you come from uh, preferably the same professional background and at least work in the same industry so then you can connect your mentees with relevant people within the industry uh olabisi you wanted to say something yes so sometimes i do not necessarily take mentees that in my own profession because i have friends around me friends in accounting in 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 medicine that i leverage on you know so when they ask me questions i can't answer so if if it's if it's things like schooling you know like housing general credit i can but when it comes to like professional questions i kind of leverage on, on my own internal network to provide the answers back to them so sometimes i don't take people that in my like in my in my field i take people that from other fields and i just kind of you know leverage on my community to get them the answers that they need to get and it works it, it, i mean so far it, it's worked for me and and my mentees okay and uh, uh, and I, i wanted to ask you one more question like uh, uh, what do you think what do you suggest uh, ask, asking a question is very important when when you um, are in this relationship so uh, how did you uh, ask the questions that uh, uh, worked, worked well for you uh, olabisi so what i do is um when we first start i i i, I let them lead so i just kind of send them like you know it's okay this is this is who i am this is what i do i'm in this field you know i landed so 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 years you know i can offer your assistance in this section so i let them lead the conversation but when i see that they're kind of not responding or not coming then i put questions to them but i kind of i let them lead you know in the beginning and i just build up from there so that i can get what they're thinking so i don't lead so i don't take it from from the, from what they are thinking i let them give in their thoughts i know what's bothering them the most where they have the issues with and i kind of take it from there uh bajat uh, there are some questions uh, like very generic in uh, in terms of uh, finding a job or uh, writing a resume like you uh, said earlier that uh, you had a resume five pages of resume and that was a different style so other than the, those specific skills those specific things that you can teach your mentee um, these are the common grounds these are the common things that uh, a, a mentor and a mentee can uh, work on uh, what do you think about that and what are those things that uh, a mentor can help a mentee in in, in guiding them uh, according to canadian job market i think shadil it's important for the mentor to understand uh, uh, the purpose and the goals of the mentee and uh, 
essentially in pretty much all the cases, what they're looking for is becoming economically successful in Canada. And in doing that, it's not necessary that they would be seeking help to find work in their own field. A uh, mentor having had you know, years of experience in the Canadian market should be able to understand that uh, there are certain transferable skills that they should be able to see on the mentee's resume and hence direct them in other options, uh, optional directions, open new pathways for them and let them know, hey, if you are an accountant, it doesn't mean that you have to try, uh, you know, keep on trying to find work in your field. It essentially means that you are good with numbers, that you have, uh, you have great financial literacy skills. And that is something that you can utilize in another field, which might be, um, you know, which might have a higher demand, data analytics, for example, and being able to see through the resume and focus on those transferable skills. I think it's a key uh, skill that a mentor should have um, because sometimes the mentees might not know what are the right questions to ask. Uh, again, you should go back to what the ultimate goal of, which is helping mentees find work, not necessarily in their fields, but uh, work that would be economically gainful for them. So I think all mentors should focus on transferable skills. Exactly. Uh, Pradeep, uh... Uh, how one can build a strong relationship, a long-term relationship with, uh, with their uh, mentor, um, not only just for quick some time, but uh, later in the um, uh, job search and uh, in your career, in your professional life? Uh, I think uh, spending time together, talking, uh, connecting. I still am in touch with some of the mentees that I've had seven, eight years ago. Uh, reaching out, sh sharing an update as to what's happened uh, in their life, uh, connecting through LinkedIn. Uh, these are all opportunities where it's great. In fact, now what I do is I, when I have a mentee in a field which is closer to one of the previous mentees that I've had, I will re who has I know has been successful in that field, I will reach out and seek their help because one of the key things is who's the person who's likely to help this immigrant who's come into this country? Someone who feels the pain. That's what drove me from being a mentee to a mentor. If I had not felt that pain, I would not have been so passionate about being a mentor. Now, clearly, if I have mentored some poor people and they have now not necessarily got a job because of me, but they've settled down in their life, they're doing well, I reach out to them. So I maintain from my side also relationship and say, hey guys, can you help out with this new person? And that's a person who's likely to help that immigrant. And uh, Majid, uh, how a, a mentor can be a role model for their mentees? Like just uh, uh, Pradeep shared that uh, his experience that uh, he is in touch with uh, some of his uh, old mentees. So uh, a mentor, uh, people call it, uh, a guide, uh, a person who uh, all, teaches all those things that uh, they had experienced and um, they wanted to transfer their experience to, to, to the to next uh, uh, generation or uh, uh, the mentee. So how a mentor can be a role model uh, in terms of uh, job search, in terms of professional uh, growth? So Shredil, before I you know, attempt to answer that question, it's important to understand that mentor is not necessarily a formal title. And, and that is the reason over the last few years, I've tried to steer away from formal mentoring uh, structures uh, because mentorship is something that you cultivate over time. You first try to get along with the person you are connecting with, you build a rapport. That's very, very important. And once you are able to do that, you are in a position where you can demonstrate your own influence, your own skill set, your knowledge and wisdom. Uh, because uh, there's a thing called uh, um, uh, suspension of disbelief in psychology. So right off the gate, the first reaction that we have to meeting a new person is that we have what is called um, disbelief. We need reasons and evidence to trust a person that we are connecting with. And that takes time. So it's very important that you build that rapport so that you can uh, in your own way, showcase what are the resources, what is the knowledge and information that you can bring to the table and help them. Uh, once you're able to do that, you automatically become a role model for them. Of course, you have to do what you preach. You have to come across as somebody who has 
the required knowledge that the mentee is looking for, uh, you have to be very active on and off social media. So uh, somebody who is uh, not known uh, to a lot of people would not be able to demonstrate uh, the skill sets that he can then transfer to mentees. So it's very important that you are somebody who's known uh, and uh, who's known as an influencer. And uh, as I said, it's very, very important that you have the relevant experience about the, uh, the course of action that you are charting for your uh, mentee. Just to give you an example, somebody who's looking to start a company in Canada, a few years ago, I would not have been an ideal mentor for that person because I had never started a business of my own uh, seven, eight years ago. Um, so you can only be a role model when you have actually walked in their shoes and be able to demonstrate that experience. Uh, so a quick uh, uh, reminder for all of you uh, who are watching us uh, through Zoom and who are watching us through uh, YouTube, uh, uh, do send us uh, your questions uh, and our guests will uh, definitely answer those questions. Uh, Olabisi, I would like you to share your experience now as a mentor, how many mentees that you have mentored and still the process is going on and how uh, is uh, uh, your plan uh, in terms of guiding them uh, in the job market of Canada? Yeah, okay. So I think up to date. So I, I joined the mentorship program late last year, I think around um, September or thereabouts. So it's, I'm not up to a year in, in, in the old program. So I think I've had so far like between five and six so far. You know, and I think three has been completed and th like three is currently ongoing. So, um, so they come to me and they're like, oh, I want to work in Oracle. I want to work. So I'm like, okay, what's a skill set? What do you have? You know, so I try and make, and make them see what they need to have to work in certain occupations, you know. So I tell them, look, if an IT person and you don't have relevant certifications, it's very hard for you to get an interview. So if you want to do this, you know, go this out of working in Oracle, working in this as this in this particular role. What do you have to show these North American people that look, I can perform in this role? So apart from experience from working and son from back home, what do you have to validate the fact that you know I, I know the best practices to work in this particular role? So I tell them, you know, so what do you want to do? Based on based on what you want to do, this is what you need to have in place. One, one said you want to start, <laughs> I said I want to start a business. I said. It's not that easy, just landing and, you know, I say you need to settle down first of all, you know, know the ground, understand the market, where you want to start, is it viable where you're living, you know, and before you can get out, you need to start working to get, you know, to get, I mean, to pay your bills. So I kind of guide them to know what, what, what they can do when they land and how they can, you know, move forward from there to do what they want to do really, but they must be settled and you need to have this in place, this one, two, three things to succeed, either as a professional or either as an entrepreneur. I tell them landing in Canada and going as an entrepreneur straight away, it's not very advisable because there are many laws that we don't have back from where we're coming from that exist in Canada here. So you need to know those laws and, and make sure that they can, you know, so, make sure yeah, that- It means that you not stick, you, you not stick to uh, employment opportunities and uh, guiding them according to the job market, but you also, uh, tell them how to start a business, uh, be an entrepreneur. So No, they asked you... me. No, they asked. Yeah. So the guy okay. said he wanted to come down and wanted to start a business. So I'm like, oh, the, the guidelines for doing a business in Canada is different from where you're coming from. So I'm just saying that, you know, to get to start a business in Canada, it's, um, it's something that you do as a, as a fresh immigrant. You need to understand the ropes how it works, what guides your industry before you jump into a business. But in the meantime, you need to start paying your bills. So unless you have like some huge money stashed away somewhere, I mean, you need to start work. And, and while you are working, understand the market and see if it's still viable, you know, to go into entrepreneurship in that line of business in the province where you are. Yes. So Pradeep, uh, I just wanted to know, uh, like, um, uh, when you get to know your mentee, uh, get to know uh, its uh, strengths and weaknesses and um, according to the job market and everything here in Canada, uh, is, uh, is this happened with you? Uh, uh, like you ask them to move uh, to uh, one field to the other uh, or uh, guided them to a specific uh, field or uh, if, they, if you got 
uh, to know about the potential of that mentee that uh, this can be a good businessman so you stayed them to towards mm uh, not employment but towards entrepreneurship is this happened with you or uh, you think that no, it, not, it is possible not really towards the entrepreneurship uh, i i cup share a couple of thoughts uh, one is i always tell them like i think it been alluded to here and a couple of the comments before is that you've got to think through clearly what is your short term goal what is your long term goal i always tell them i cannot decide that for you somebody who's come with a wealth of money doesn't matter he or she can hold on to a, to searching for the right job for 6 months or year doesn't matter but somebody who is cash flow is going to finish in 3 months time they've got to see in the short term how do they generate the cash put an objective from that perspective can their spouse do some work to generate it always plan for themselves what's the kind of job that they think they can do to generate that cash think in terms of the medium term how can they certify or educate themselves because when a immigrant comes here a uh, really wh- why does the immigrant in my mind face a challenge of of the job market and and we are t- dealing with typically the skilled immigrants so here's a person who is skilled is qualified and comes to canada because of the skill he or she possesses however when that person comes here there are two key things that the business is looking for the education and the experience the education somebody who's educated outside the canadian market says you're not educated here i don't consider you the second is the experience they say oh you're not exper- even though i'm a banker and i've worked all over the world they say you don't have canadian experience so how do you really bridge those couple of gaps uh, when you come into the market here so plan for yourself as to how you're going to generate the cash what you're going to do in the medium term and what you're going to do in the longer term and my advice to a number of them has been that if you can sustain the cash flow which is your own personal issue don't undersell yourself don't undersell yourself because i have seen a number of cases where the immigrants who are skilled people who've got typically 10 to 15 years of experience are willing to work as a as a very very i won't say lower job but a job that does not stand as that the skill yeah. that bit so that's your personal situation decide for that but if you have support from a cash flow perspective do work it out you will be successful uh majid uh, mm-hmm. what what do you think about that like uh, uh, is this uh, uh like if somebody is uh, having uh, a different so- uh, sort of um, education a different sort of experience and you when you go through uh, uh, his uh, resume you 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 believe that this this guy can be uh, a businessman or this guy guy can be an entrepreneur so uh, so can mentor uh, push their mentees towards uh, these opportunities or just stick to what they think that uh, they, they will uh, initially go around uh, here in canada like doing a job and things like that i i think first of all to set the expectations between the mentor and the mentee the role of the mentor is not to uh, direct a mentee towards a certain direction or path uh, they just uh, show them different opportunities and different possibilities and in doing them uh, they have to understand uh, whether the mentee has the potential to eventually start their own business if they see that potential um, they can suggest that you know instead of trying really hard for a few months to um, find work in your field uh, with all the barriers that there are to employment which pradeep talked about um, starting your own work your own business could be an option i think it's very essential uh, that um the mentor doesn't push them towards a certain direction and let the mentee decide on their own the financial consideration i think is paramount is predominantly the one that would uh that would ensure that they would be able to sustain themselves during the setup phase of their business because any business 
uh, might take at least uh, a year or two to generate positive cash flows. During that time, if they have enough savings coming from their home country to sustain themselves and their families, uh, why not? They should definitely be open to that opportunity. Again, if they have the skills, if they have the understanding that Olibisi alluded to, for example, how to set up a business, uh, you know, reaching out to the right people through the mentor and uh, using their resources, uh, they should definitely think of doing that. I would not be uh, inclined towards pushing my mentee to a certain direction unless I see an indication uh, that they are willing and interested in doing so. And I would only open opportunities and, you know, open options for them. Certainly. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, with that, uh, the mentor is the sounding board. Uh, and I agree with Majid completely. He's the sound, he or she is the sounding board. Uh, if I can just, uh, you know, my view of what a mentor's typical role is. Here's a person, skilled person who comes into this country. He, he or she is excited for this new opportunity. Obviously, that's why they're coming to this country. That expectation or excitement goes down in the dump when he or she can't find a job or can't sustain themselves. My job as a mentor is to help bring that excitement or enthusiasm back up to say, hey, you know what? This is a great country. You will make a success. You are a professional. You've come here for your skills. You will make it a success. I help that person build that confidence and enthusiasm back into that immigrant. To that's I see that as my biggest role. It means that uh, showing hope uh, to all who are planning to come to Canada is it's the integral part, it's the important part. So, well, let me see, um, there's a question. Uh, I would direct this question towards you. Like, uh, before even starting the relationship uh, with your uh, mentor, how uh, important is to ask the pertinent questions uh, to get to know, uh, is this a good match? Is this a good fit uh, for you? Uh, how you uh, how you would ad address this? Yeah, so as a mentor with Canada Infonet, you know, um, they give you like guidelines that you need to follow, which is um, making sure that, you know, you communicate properly because if you don't know the expectations and you can't answer the questions properly, then the communication breaks down and that's a big, big problem, you know? So it's important that you understand from the onset what the objective is. And as a mentor, sometimes I, I, I need to go and research to, to, to ensure that I'm giving the accurate answers to the, I mean, to the mentees. I, 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 I just don't rely on my past experience. So I go back and I read, I ask questions and come back, you know what, this is what I found out and this is it's, I mean, it's meant to be. So it's important that, you know, you set the expectations you understand the mentors, the mentors goals, their fears, you know, you, 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 sometimes I, I need to set right some wrong notions or some wrong beliefs, you know, from the men, I mean, from the mentees. So asking questions ensure that, you know, you have good communication and you answer the, the questions in the right way. So that when they come in and they land, you know, they hit the ground running without any false or misleading notions about where they are coming into. Uh, Pradeep, uh, I would ask you uh, another question uh, related to this. Um, like uh, when you get into this uh, uh, relationship of a, a mentee and mentor, uh, it, it, like if you are not getting the results that uh, you, you wanted to uh, gain, um, how likely is to change your mentor and then try to look for another mentor and then... Um, how is this process and um, uh, do you recommend if, if you are not getting the results or if you, if you are not getting those uh, questions answered, uh, is this a good uh, way to uh, change your mentor and go around and uh, look for uh, another one? Uh, absolutely. I mean, after all, uh, I, so you're talking from a mentee's perspective. Clearly, if you are not getting the expected results, what you're working out of any relationship, uh, whether it be friendship or uh, anything else, you would certainly not invest more time because you are, as a mentee, you are investing. And if the mentor is, the mentor has to be genuinely caring, should be listening to uh, the mentee's request. And if that is not coming for the, men, 
mentee, then there's no point continuing with the mentor and look for a change. Uh, here, here, I would uh, also um, share my experience as a mentee. Uh, when I was trying to um, uh, get somebody uh, from my field, uh, initially it was very difficult because uh, the background that I carry uh, was quite a bit different. Uh, I did engineering and then uh, I went into the media. So I was trying to get the perfect fit for my uh, mentor. So I was fortunate enough to get uh, Gerard Kalejian as my mentor. So uh, he helped me um, understanding the scenario here in Canada regarding media because very few people having the anchoring background, um, having the reporting backgrounds uh, come from um, different parts of the world uh, here in Canada. So Majid, uh, my question is uh, to you. Like uh, there are some some fields, there are some specific fields, uh, some uh, experience that you carry from from your uh, uh, home country when you are planning to come to Canada. So uh, sometimes it's unable to find somebody directly uh, uh, according to your field. So in that case, what do you suggest? Go with the flow, go with your mentor, uh, nearly uh, sharing the experience or wait for somebody who... Uh, has the exact same uh, experience that you carry? I would say if a mentee finds that the mentor uh, he or she is working with is uh, not able to provide them the opportunities because they come from a different background or they belong to a different industry, uh, depending on, uh, I mean, it's the mentee's call. If they see that there is still value in uh, continuing with that relationship beyond the short-term objective of finding work in their field, I would encourage them to stay in touch because first of all, mentorship is a two-way street and it's not definitely uh, necessarily something that would be short term. So it's very important that you uh, stay connected with people who can then benefit you and conversely who you can benefit later on. Uh, so I would still say you stay in touch with those people while you look for other men mentors. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to just uh, have one mentor, it can be a couple of them, three or four, depending on what your objectives is, uh, are, and how these mentors can help you in different areas of, uh, of what your goals are. Look, essentially, a mentor is somebody uh, who can encourage you to ask the right questions, because you are blindsided. And that's particularly true for people coming from outside of Canada, they don't even know what the right questions are, uh, they don't know what they don't know. So um, making them feel comfortable in the new environment, asking them questions so that those questions can then lead to the right questions. For example, if I were to, uh, were to ask my mentee, have you thought about how long the savings that you have in your bank account would last? Uh, they would start thinking about that and accordingly create a plan uh, you know, and have a target date, which they would then use to work backwards and see what is it that they need to do today in order to achieve their short-term goal, their medium-term and long-term no, uh, goals. If I do not uh, direct their attention to their financial situation, they would be blindsided because they uh, apparently feel that, you know, they have enough savings to last them a year. Uh, that might not be the case necessarily. Uh, so encouraging uh, the mentees to ask the right question is something that you can do regardless of whether you belong to the same industry or have the exam exact same background. Yeah, Perfect. and to speak to what Majid said, um, Shadil, that's why, you know, sometimes, um, like, I, like I said earlier, I, I don't always take people from my own profession because I believe I can offer even people that are not an account, I mean, I'm in IT, so I've gotten accountants before and because of these generic questions about the you know, savings, about cash flow, in accommodation, you know, it helps, you can, you can pass across this information and for Canada Infonet mentorship, it's not only when there's there, there's this. Um, it's not only when you know there's no communication possible between the mentor and the mentor that it gets cut off. Sometimes when the mentor is not responding after several, you know, several like hi, hello, are you okay? You know, I've been from for a while. Can you come back to me? Canada Infonet has a system where, whereby they kind of shut down that partnership because they have other people waiting on the queue. So they kind of make sure that you know after several weeks of no response from the men from the mentee, kind of cut it off. But at the same time, I leave open my LinkedIn for you know for access for contact afterwards. So it works that way. As so, well. so how often uh, did you uh, uh, send in the questions, and uh, how often 
uh, when as you, as a mentor, uh, how often do you uh, answer those questions? So, what do you think about that? What do you suggest? Uh, how can somebody um, frequently ask the questions or uh, just stick for uh, stick to just only one question one day? Or uh, how do you say that? So, when they feel so for Canada Infinite Mentoring, you know, mentoring process when they feel when they feel the mentee agreement, they state in that, they state how many times per week they want to contact you and they state when they expect you to get back to them. But even that being said, I don't mind. Sometimes, most times I answer the questions almost immediately. And because of the back and forth, I end up sometimes in a week and do like four or five, you know, five, four or five times, you know, speaking. So even though they feel twice in the, in the mentee agreement, you know, we end up doing more than that weekly and sometimes, you know, bi-weekly. But my point is, I answer the, as, as, as the questions come, I answer them. So there's no structured fixed time. And, and I, I try to answer the questions like, like latest two days, you know, interval. Uh, okay. can, I, can I add something to that? Yeah, sure, sure. Definitely. I think it's, it's very important that you stay in touch with your mentor uh, on a consistent basis. And it doesn't have to be always for asking a question. Uh, I think it's very important that you uh, that you show gratitude, for example, after every meeting or every call. And that's a good excuse to stay in touch with them. Um, other reasons could be providing them updates. You know, for example, last week we met and you gave me these three, um, you know, great advices. And uh, this is what I've done on each of them. So let me if I'm uh, let me know if I'm moving in the right direction of uh, or do I need to. Um, change my course. So just giving them updates, saying thank you could be a good reason uh, to stay in touch if you don't have a question. But it's very important to cultivate the relationship from day one so that you can eventually build a long lasting relationship, which again would be uh, mutually beneficial. Uh, I mean, there might be things that you would be able to contribute to their experience. Uh, personally, for me, being a mentor over the last few years, I've learned a lot from my mentees. So when a mentee says, thank you for being a mentor, I say, thank you for being my mentor. Because, you know, uh, it's not always that you have to have a formal title of mentor that, uh, that uh, you know, only then you can teach some somebody something. Uh, it, it is a two-way street, really. Exactly. And uh, just to share with our audience that uh, there are so many portals uh, like Triac, Canada Infonet, uh, you can uh, go on to these uh, and find your mentors and uh, uh, seek the help that you need uh, in terms of your uh, job search and everything. And also, Pradeep, um, I wanted to ask you, like, there are so many portals that are working. Um, uh, usually, LinkedIn also is uh, used to get your mentors. Anybody who, from your field, you can find out through LinkedIn and uh, you can uh, connect with them and uh, ask them to be your mentor. So uh, what do you think uh, exploring all uh, opportunities uh, in terms of finding a mentor could help? Absolutely, yes. So, uh, you know, uh, people with similar background or the same institute that you studied from, uh, there's a better chance that that person. So if a random, if I get a random LinkedIn request, I'm unlikely to accept that. Uh, as a connection. But yes, if somebody reaches out to me who worked in the same bank as I had or same institute that uh, I studied in, uh, there's likely to be a better chance. But I just also wanted to add that there are a lot of professional networks in Canada. Uh, there, they are could be a great source for immigrants to reach out to and attend some of those sessions. For instance, uh, I'm sure the engineers institutes or uh, networks, professional networks, or professional network of nursing home professionals. So reaching out to those professional networks would help you meet people from your same background and can help you get a mentor or somebody who can guide you closer to your profession. And there's also a question I would like uh, to, uh, I would like C to answer this. Uh, if somebody is from a different uh, province and wanted to move to a different province, uh, uh, in that case, like uh, this movement, uh, can a mentor help them uh, navigate their uh, job search from one province to the other? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, yes, because, um, you know, like I said, I, I usually leverage on my personal network, you know, when this happens. So I'm moving to Alberta, I'm moving to, you know, to Ontario, you know. So I have friends there, you know, and in your profession, I kind of just link them up. I tell them, you know, just do specific job searches for, you know, accountants in, I don't know, Toronto, accountants in Nova Scotia. I say just, you know, you can also do that too, to narrow down your job searches where you're going to. And also, yes, LinkedIn as well. Make sure that, you know, on LinkedIn, you put your profile as, oh, um, looking for jobs in this particular area. And that kind of helps narrow, you know, what you get, you know, as recommendations for your jobs, for your job applications on LinkedIn. So there are various ways it can help, you know, personal network, you know, um, LinkedIn special, you know, LinkedIn customization and job searches that is located to that particular province. So I, tell, I give them all these pointers to help them to settle down wherever they are going to. So Pradeep, uh, what were uh, the mistakes or things that you think that uh, you, you got missed when you were a mentee and now you are uh, trying to bridge, bridge those things for, for your mentees um, uh, after learning that experience that uh, this, this should be um, like uh, the mentees should know this uh, in terms of uh, jobs and in terms of um, resume writing and everything. Uh, I, I'm going to frame that question or answer that question slightly differently. So what are the three, two or three things that mentees should always do? Uh, I would yeah. say first, be very patient. Uh, it's not just because you are in a mentorship program. To me, I say I am the sounding board. I'm the advisor, but I'm not going to get you a job. That's not my role. My role is to support you. So be patient. Be very open. Uh, we we talked, uh, Majid talked of different industries. I always tell them, and I most of my mentees have been from the banking world because I work in a bank, but I tell them, don't expect to be employed by the top five banks in this country. There's a greater chance. There's a, there are more than 150 banks in this country. Don't be stuck to getting a job in downtown Toronto. You don't have a house yet. You don't have a school, children going to a school. Why wouldn't you go to an, to Edmonton, for instance, and take up a job? So be open in terms of where you're going to get a job. If you are more open, be a more patient. And the last thing is be networking is the most important thing. Now, networking is something I did not understand before coming to Canada. Uh, that is a very, very important. Networking is not going to get you a job but it's going to get you in front of people who understand your skill sets and you understand what that business is. So I would say as a mentee, uh, three key things I see of uh, being patient, being more open and concentrating on networking, because those are the three things that are going to get you a job. Uh, so Majid, the, a very important question. Uh, how a mentee can be a mentor? What was your experience from uh, get, uh, from mentee towards uh, becoming a mentor? Uh, I think the first thing is they have to have strong enough motivation. There has to be a reason and purpose and a meaning in doing that. For me, it was for a number of reasons. I would say the first of all, it was an inner calling. I feel morally obligated to um, pay back, to you know, give back to the community and paid forward because of my positive experience with not just my formal mentor, uh, but a number of mentors uh, that I connected with over a period of time. So, and in terms of my inner calling, I would say it was partly a spiritual calling and partly a more utilitarian calling. Uh, so I knew that there are real roadblocks for immigrants. Just to share some numbers with you, Shadil, for example, yeah. in Toronto, whereas there are 51 percent people who are categorized as visible minority, 51, but ironically minority, uh, their representation in uh, executive positions is only 6%. So it's a real problem. And we know that these immigrants uh, who eventually end up landing jobs in their fields do not earn the same kind of income that somebody born in Canada would. Uh, so we know by numbers, we know it for a fact that there are these uh, real barriers, call it discrimination or whatever you may, but there has to be a solution to that. 
So uh, if people who have gone through the same struggles have, uh, you know, walked the same uh, path, if they are not to come forth and help these newcomers, who else would? So for me, that is the most important second reason. And thirdly, I think uh, it, it's a more selfish reason because, as I said, I have been able to go up the learning curve in ways that I never saw possible, uh, just by the virtue of reaching out to or connecting to people who come from diverse backgrounds, racially, uh, ethnically, or otherwise. You learn things that uh, you are otherwise blindsided to. So for you as a mentor, it's a great learning opportunity. So if you feel that these are the three benefits that you can relate to, I would say that definitely think about transitioning from a mentee to a mentor, but there have to have to be sound reasons for doing that. And all of see, what's the process like uh, from Canada Infonet? Uh, how did you get into uh, this uh, uh, becoming a mentor from a mentee? So I've always desired. Um, so, you know, the one gap I saw when I was being mentored was when I landed, you know, Rick McCallan, I was my mentor, a wonderful person from Canada Infonet, very wonderful mentor. You know, it was Canadian or he is Canadian. Now, like Majid, like Majid mentioned, we have some very real barriers that we encounter as immigrants. And because he's never worked in those shoes, he didn't understand to prepare me for those barriers coming into the country. You know, so I thought to myself that, you know what? what would be the best platform for me to give back and close this gap with people like me coming to Canada? And of course, my thought went to Canada Infonet and they always put out the ad that, you know, we need mentors, you know, come and join us. And I applied once, I didn't get in, I applied a second time and I got in. So just go to the, to the Canada Infonet website and just fill out the form. They ask you some questions. And I think for, for Canada Infonet, the motivation is a very, very crucial thing for them. Why? Because it, it, it's not paid, right? It, it's voluntary. And yeah. you spend time, you spend energy, you know, ask you questions. Sometimes I have like three mentors at a time I'm, 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 I'm trying to, you know, sort out. So it, it takes time. So you need to be committed and, and they want to make sure that you have that commitment and that interest to see you through. And so, yes, yeah, so that desire, you know, to close that gap, that immigrant gap that I know a white kind of cannot, cannot really tell you what to expect and also to give back to the community that helps him. And so I, so you just go to Canada Infonet, fill the questionnaire, answer, they call you, they interview you. And if you pass the interview, then you become a mentor. And that's how it works with Canada Infonet. So now we are going to conclude. So Pradeep, uh, any last uh, special tips that you want to give to people who wanted to become a mentee or a mentor? I would say I became a mentor because of the calling, but I think I benefit from the mentoring a lot. When I find a mentor, mentee, I tell him whether you get any out of it or not, I do it for my satisfaction. I have great satisfaction in mentoring people who are coming in. And I do it for my satisfaction. If you as a mentee get something out of it, that's your luck. I do it for my own self. So it's a great amount of satisfaction being a mentor for your own self. And if that is the motivation, a lot of mentees should become mentors also. Majid. Shridhal, I think more than being a position of privilege, which people think it is, it is more of a position of responsibility. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, Newton, for example, famously said that um, if I've been uh, able to see further, uh, it is by standing on top of shoulders of giants. So what it really means is these giants were, uh, were Sir Isaac Newton's mentors, essentially. Maybe they came before him, maybe they had some privilege, maybe they got unique opportunities, or maybe they were just uh, plain lucky. Whatever the reason was, they had knowledge and wisdom that uh, Sir Isaac Newton did not have. So it's essentially using uh, that uh, you know opportunity, that privilege, or that position that uh, your mentors have to extend your own wisdom and your own foresight. Um, again, for me, it is a position of responsibility. It's very important that I deliver when I embark on a relationship with a mentee. And uh, as I alluded to again and again during the conversation, it's a two-way street. You, you have to make sure as a mentee that you do the work. Um, you are uh, obligated just by the fact that somebody's spending time sitting down with you, you know, spending time over phone or in um, form of in-person meeting, that you follow through, that you show up 
that you show professionalism and integrity. Uh, so it's very important that uh, it's a two-way relationship. Uh, for the mentors, I think it's very important that they focus on the impact and uh, rather than just going through the motions and going through the meetings and uh, you know going through the checklist, it's very important that they uh, that they prove that they there is some value in that relationship. And the only way they can prove that is uh, helping mentees achieve what their goals really are. Exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Majid Kazmi. Thank you so much, Pradeep Mathur. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Olabisi Edisina, for joining us uh, for this session. And uh, thank you all who have watched us through Zoom and through YouTube and also uh, sent us uh, the question. And uh, I hope uh, we have um, answered your questions. And uh, uh, Cafe New Canadians is always there for you to guide you about uh, topics that are matter uh, to all the new immigrants, newcomers to Canada, and all those who plan to come to Canada. So the session uh, was mentee to mentors, what it's like. You can um, also uh, log into our website and see all the resources that we mentioned uh, in today's discussion, uh, all uh, the things that, uh, uh, all the platforms that are uh, important for this uh, mentorship program, Try Canada Infonet, you can uh, get the information through our website. And this session was uh, brought to you by uh, sponsored by Destination Employment, and uh, you can log on to the website uh, destinationemployment.ca. And this is the platform, uh, especially for the people uh, who want to achieve uh, meaningful employment in uh, hotels and tourism sector. Uh, this can help you out uh, in a great deal uh, to understand the uh, opportunities in this field. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, for all who have joined us, um, you can also follow us through uh, social media, uh, through our Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Insta, and other platforms. And also you can subscribe to our uh, newsletter to uh, get the latest information about uh, the information uh, related to um, uh, things that matters to uh, all the new immigrants and uh, everybody uh, who are planning to come to Canada. And um, I wish you all the best and thank you again. Uh, all of BC, uh, Pradeep and Majid uh, for this insightful session. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you in the next uh, session next week.